Okay guys, I'm back and you know, it turns out that unfortunately, while we got the mathematics correct, there wasn't any gold over there. Okay, you know, we brought the right equipment. We brought the cranes to dig up the soil, but you know, when we dig up the soil, you know, when we reach at the bottom of the surface, there wasn't any gold. So, you know, what I decided to do was to come back in and do more mathematics. And, you know, looking at the problem, there's an alternate way to do that and I think it's an easier one. So, you know, why don't we just like go through it? Okay, um, so much for the, the jokes aside, okay, what we wanted to do was to find the double integral of x times y squared um, over the region r. Region r is over here, and what we did previously was that we divided into r1, r2, r3. Okay, I say again, because, you know, when we swept out a line from the extreme limits, in this case, minus 2 to 1, you know, we crossed another point of intersection and when we cross the point of intersection the limits for r or the yeah the limits for the region changes that's why we need to divide into one two and three and we also realized that you know f of s gives us the elevation above or below sea level and it's also a, a net sign value okay meaning to say that you know it's negative or positive depending on you know what the function tells us the function x and y so what we did for the first round, okay, was that we calculated the, the, the double integral of the same function over region R1, R2, and R3, and then up. But if you could suspect from the diagram, and if you could look at it carefully, there is another way, I would say maybe an easier way for us to define the double integral. Right, so the double integral of region R is um, xy squared dA, okay? Now, equals. Now, I'm going to give you a clue. I can write two separate... Um, double integrals, okay, obviously the, the R is going to change, for me to cover the region R, the region R, like I said again, is basically this region over here, okay, we did R1, R2, and R3, but there's another way I can do it, so if you would take a look, okay, what I can do is I can first uh, find the double integral over the region R4, now what is R4? R4 is going to comprise of this region right here, all right, Okay, R, that's the region of R4. Now, I know that there is a point of intersection, okay? So I know that when, when I go over here, you know, I would certainly need to change the limits. However, what I want to do is that I'm not finding um, this region yet. I'm just finding R4. R4 is this whole region over here. So, you know, draw the vertical line again. When you go down, you got y, y equals to x squared. And when you go up, you got y equals to minus, two plus, uh, minus x plus 2. So it's fine for region R, uh, for region 4. But region R is basically this shaded volume over here, okay, and region 4 is, is this plus this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to first find the double integral of the same function, function of x and y, okay, um, dy, dx of R4, and then I'm going to subtract the double integral of the same function, but this time it's going to be region 5, and what is region 5? Well, region 5, if you would have guessed it, would simply be this region over here. Remember, we are dealing with net value. So, you know, obviously, um, if I were to find the double integral of this region, it's going to be a certain value, right? Positive or negative, you know, I don't know. But then when I find the double integral of this whole region, R4, I would then subtract the double integral of this uh, region, R5, over the region, R5, and that would simply, or uh, ultimately gives us the double integral over the region, R, which is over here, like that. And that is, you know, obviously what we ultimately want to find, right? Region R. So this is perfectly fine. So as, uh, you know, just quickly speaking, now what's the good thing? Well, first of all, we have reduced the number of double integrals. Now there's only um, two, as opposed to three. Okay, and maybe the integration is going to be simpler. Let's just see. Now, minus two to one. Okay, so I'm going to uh, first write a double integral for R4. So R4 is going to go from minus 2 to 1. What is the function? Well, the function, again, uh, we're going to go down the, the bottommost function. In this case, is going to be x squared. We go up. What's the topmost function? The topmost function is minus x plus 2. Okay, the, the function f stays the same. Okay, that's the thing that you will see common. The function of x uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't change. Function of f doesn't change. All right, now, um, is it simple in a way? Yeah, maybe because it's minus 2 and 1. And then when I subtract R5, okay, what I'll get is the double integral, okay, the outer limits. Let's handle the outer limits first. It's going to be from minus 1 divided by root 2 to 1 over root 2, okay. And then it's going to be x squared again, but the upmost function is going to be half. And the same function f. So, there we go. Um, rewriting the region R or finding double integral of region R by using, you know, another step, you know, R4 and R5. And make sure it's a subtract, it's not a net. Uh, previously, we add R1, R2, and R3 because they did not overlap. But in this case, since R4 and R5 overlap, we need to subtract. 
Um, the roots have stuck, stayed on one side of the integral, so that may simplify the working a bit. Okay, so now, um, I will just fast forward a bit, right? And if you were to evaluate this, we will get zero. Don't be surprised, I will show you the graphical uh, interpretation later. Okay, but when we evaluate this, what we get is that we get negative 6 divided by 3 over 4 t. And this is the exact same value had we done it the other way. Now, this is a very interesting result, and we should, you know, just look at it just a bit more. Okay, um, look at it and see what we need. Now, notice that this uh, region R5, it's zero, okay? Now, that is a bit pe peculiar, okay? But let's just um, analyze that uh, a bit further, okay? I'm just going to write, just write R4, minus 6. Hey, so what we want to analyze is we want to find the double integral or explain why the double integral over the region R5 is equal to zero, okay? Like the thing we have over here. Now, what I did is that I have somehow, you know, mapped this um, XY plane onto a three-dimensional surface, okay? But um, I represent it in three axes, okay? This one, the Z axis is not represented in any way. It's shooting out to you, but if you can't see that, it doesn't matter. Uh, we have just moved the region R all the way over here in the X and Y. And, you know, I draw the region Z, so it gives me liberty to graph out the surface. So region R, if you can see, it's going to be over here, right? But um, region, yeah, region R is going to be here, but R4 is basically this whole region right here, okay? Um, and R5 is this region right here, okay, the plane region. So what we want to see is that why is the double integral of the function over R5 equals to zero? Now, you might be quick to think, that, oh, maybe, you know, the surface just lies flat when it reaches R5, which is the point over here. So, somehow the surface is like that, but over R5, the surface is exactly flat on R5. But that may not be the case, okay, because if we were to look at the function of x and y is x times y squared, I don't think there will be a case, I don't think it has a chance that even on a certain plane, um, the value is always equal to zero, I don't think so. Because we're obviously in this positive values for x and y over here, we should get a positive value. So what does it ultimately mean? Well, remember, the double integral gives us the net sine volume. So what it means is that if I were to graph out the surface, okay, there will be a certain point where the surface would cut the plane R5. Let's just say over here, right? And, you know, I know I'm not so good and I don't, this is not exactly a good maple representation, but just bear with me. Okay, so this surface is going to be given by z equals to the function of um, x and y, which is going to be equals to x and y squared. This is the surface that we have. For a given point in the x and y uh, plane, we get a certain value for z. Some values may be positive, some values will be negative. And when we find a double integral, we had r5, or double integral over r5 is equal to 0. So what this means is that when we isolate r5, there will be a certain point, a certain portion of r5 where the value of the double integral is going to be positive, right? And then after that, you know, if we, the other portion of R5, we are going to get a negative value for the double integral. Because why? Because the surface would somehow cut R5 at a certain point. It has to, okay? Under assumption that it doesn't lie flat, I don't think so. Because that would certainly mean that there will be a positive value and there will be a negative value for the double integral, okay, or volume, you can think about it that way, okay, right now, volume is appropriate because it's the elevation above sea level, and these two values are equal in magnitude. And this is one of the reasons why I explained that the, the region uh, plane R5, or region R in case, can be very difficult to define, because, you know, we had not anticipate that the surface would cut the region R. And, you know, had we done for the calculations, we may think that, you know, the whole surface is above the region R, which is certainly not the case. That is why, in further advanced questions, always see where the surface cuts the region R. In this case, it does cut the region R so that the, the positive value and the negative value are equal in magnitude, so when you add them up, you get zero. Okay? Our R4 is already means that the whole surface is below um, the XY plane for the region R4, and that's why we get a negative value over here. And that is why, you know, we need cranes. But basically, um, what I want to tell you is that um, it's not so easy. The double integral is not so easy as you think it is because we now have moved, I have shifted from placing the importance of the region R to placing the importance of the surface. Okay, this is what, just a question that illustrated that. Where some parts of the surface are above the region, some parts are below the region. And we need further techniques to look at that. So, you know, when are we going to interpret it that it's a positive volume or a negative volume or zero volume or whether is it, you know, positive and negative balance out or whether it is in fact zero. 
Okay, so that is just to show you the different emphasis on first on region R and first on the function. And now this is a case where we need emphasis on the function. Okay, uh, thanks a lot and you know, um, hope to get some goals soon. Thanks.